Hello, this is Louise. I'm here with Raji today to talk about her experience with chronic kidney disease. Thanks so much for joining us for this discussion. Hey, you're most welcome, okay. Louise. How did you first find out you had reduced kidney function? Well, I think it was 10 years ago. I used to go and see my physician regarding my diabetic condition. And uh, when he did the blood test, this is in Malaysia. And uh, he told me, uh, wow, well, we found uh, protein in your urine. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, I think your kidney is starting to damage. It's just at the beginning stage. That was 10 years ago. And that's how I knew that something is happening. Mm -hmm. It was very, very frightening. Yes. It shook me. And my only thought is my children, mm -hmm. they were, you know, 10 years ago, they were like teenagers. So that was very frightening. And how did you know your kidneys had failed? I had problems with my eyes. My eyes was bleeding. Oh, wow. Yes, it was bleeding. Um, I, what, uh, I could, when I go to bed, I will wake up and then I'll see blood oozing out. Uh, I managed to go to a uh, eye center in Kapolei. And the doctor jumped. She said, That's your whole good. <laughs> eyes is out. That's what she said. Your whole eye is out. And there was a lot of commotion and they were trying to find a retina consultant. And he said, we have to fix your eyes, and that will be... I met him on a Tuesday, he said, Thursday, you're going in. Wow. And he fixed my eyes. It was my left eye first. So what did he do? He... The, my retina was detaching. Okay. If it detaches, that's it, you can't see. Yeah. He fixed it back. Oh, okay. Yeah. And my eye was good. I was going back from the... Um, uh, surgery center and there I get a call from the hospital saying that my kidney is at 20% Oof. even the eye doctor told me that go and check your kidneys, kidneys because the eye and kidney is connected and I went and did my blood test before I went for the surgery right so they told me it's at 20% Oof. So, so then you went I assume you went to your nephrologist and started yeah, there the was paperwork. a few nephrologists I met. Some of them were just like it felt like there's nothing they can do for you. Mm. Yeah, there were appointments that I made, and I'm like dependent on them, right? right? I'm clinging on to them, and they won't come. They will say, "Okay, uh, not available." And I'll be shattered. No kidding. Yeah. yeah. And then that will be another nephrologist in Malaysia too. I met a few. Then when I was here, I met uh, a few of them. A lot of disappointments. Sounds like it. Yes. You are looking and searching for an answer, but it's not there. So I you finally found a way to start dialysis. Yes, so my kidney failed in 2018 after a battle of 10 years. Mm -hmm. So in 2018 May, my kidney failed. I didn't realize because uh, I was walking and I cannot walk 10 steps. I find it difficult to breathe. I feel bloated, all that nephrotic syndromes. Uh, it was tough and then at that point, I was here, and I couldn't because of the symptoms. They said, you cannot take a flight. And here I am struggling. I'm going to die. Let me die beside my children, <laughs> not here. <laughs> and then I uh, did um, stem cell treatment. And somehow it helped me, and I went back. And I was still trying to take care of myself. And it was like maybe five, six months I was okay. Then I was down again. 
So the stem cell treatment was geared to reducing the nephrotic syndrome? Yes. Okay. To, in a way, heal my kidney. I came back. Then uh, when I was in Malaysia, I realized I find it difficult to walk, difficult to breathe. And I feel like I'm swollen. I was swollen. My face was swollen. My stomach was swollen. My legs were swollen. My friends started telling me, you look swelled up. What's wrong? Are you sad about something? I said, hey, I have to go and find my nephrologist. And then I went to see and they said, 10% uh, GFR. Oof. And then I searched for a nephrologist. I found one. I got myself admitted. They admitted me that same day. And there where everything started. <laughs> it was terrible. They took me in. They said, we have to put the catheter in. We have to start dialysis immediately because your heart and lungs is filled with liquid. And they did the surgery here. That was a real uh, horrible experience. This doctor, nephrologist, is trying to put the catheter in. Uh, this side, he tried this side. And um, I could feel the tube going into my chest. Oh. And there I am, <laughs> being a big, brave person. I am uh, praying as loud as, as I could in the operation theater. All the nurses and the doctor was there, and I didn't care. I was just praying. And I'm begging him, God, if you have to take me, you just take me. Don't make me suffer this much. And. He's trying to do it and he couldn't do it. And I know something is not right. So like a lightning, this Chinese doctor ran in. He just did one thing. He came, he, uh, he managed to put in some liquid through my uh, IV because my vein has collapsed. Mm -hmm. That is why it wasn't going in. Right. They tried here and then they went to my groin. They tried that. I'm like that oh <laughs> on my. the bed, praying like that. <laughs> like that is a horrible experience. <laughs> yes. Poke then, poke dear. <laughs> then he came like a lightning. He gave me a, a liquid in my uh, IV and he did it within a second. He put it in. I didn't realize anything. He was my life savior. <laughs> And then they um, discharged me to go back home. And then I started the in-center dialysis. That was with a lot of challenges. I will just faint. I will collapse because low blood sugar. Um, there's a lot of things you have to understand when you do uh, your dialysis. You cannot be eating when you're doing dialysis because when you eat, the blood rushes to your stomach and your BP drops. So that's not good? Nobody told us that. <laughs> you have to experience that to know it. I understand you're now using home hemodialysis. Yes, Can you I tell am. me about that process and what you have to do? Yeah, um, home hemodialysis, um, my doctor suggested that I try it. And um, I felt that that was a very good option for me and I thought I won't say no before trying. And then I went for training in Pearl Ridge. There is a home hemo training center and uh, there's a nurse there who trained me for one and a half months I think. And uh, she showed me how to set up the machine, how to uh, prepare my medical supplies, how to cannulate myself and to connect myself to the machine and uh, run the machine. It's like two and a half hours. So I did the training and uh, I started at home. So basically you have to prepare the machine. You have to make uh, water, which is called the sack. It makes water uh, for seven hours. There is some substance in it. The machine is also connected to the water supply. 
because the waste has to go out and the supply of the water has to come in to make that 60 liters of water which I use for two days. So um, while I set up the machine I have to check my temperature, I have to check my weight uh, pre and post. It's important and I have to take my blood pressure before I start my treatment. So I set up all the uh, medical supplies, my strange, my alcohol, my iodine, uh, my heparin and everything. Set it up. Hygiene is very important. I have to wear my gloves and my mask when I set up the whole thing. And uh, for me when I set up it's like a prayer. Because I don't like to make mistakes, I have to be focused and I pay attention to it. And I, if my husband asks me anything, I just say, not now. So I pay attention, machine, medical supplies, and then I have to test the chloramine test. It's quite a number of things you have to do. And then I cannulate myself and um, tape it and then connect it to the machine and start the machine. And it's not just starting the machine and let it run for two and a half hours and I sit. No, I don't know how others do it, but for me, I really have to pay attention. I also have an iPad where I key in every half an hour my blood pressure. And um, I have to make sure the numbers are running within the range because uh, there can be uh, sometimes the needle is touching the wall and there will be difference in numbers, so you have to take it out and adjust it back again. Mm -hmm. So I like to be attentive, so I can catch things beforehand. And if there's an alarm, you have to sort that alarm off. So um, at the beginning, it was a challenge because you are, although you have gone for training, that is the real training ground when you're experiencing it. And there's no nurse, there's no doctors. So I was um, nervous, my husband was there and uh, we tried to uh, call the technical support which you can call any time of the day and they will try to guide you with the alarms. If there's any medical problems then you have to call your nurse, they will assist you. Now they have more nurses we can call after our nurses so they will guide you through too. Then after the two and a half hours treatment, you stop your treatment, wrap up everything. It takes about three and a half hours. I do it like five times a week. I can take two days off, but not two days uh, on a row. Yeah. And I can see the difference in my health the um, flexibility of liquid I can drink more liquid because I'm dialyzing five times mm -hmm. and the flexibility of food too uh, my, my potassium you see when I see uh, my dietitian every once a month I visit my uh, my nurse in Pearl Ridge and also my dietitian my social worker my financial coordinator I meet all of them and I have my conversation with and uh, my dietitian will give me my report card. <laughs> <laughs> the report card of my labs, yes. I do. I have to do my labs myself. Yeah? And then I uh, send it to US Renal Care in Kapolei. Then they will tell me how is the range of my potassium, my phosphorus, my blood count and everything else. And most of the time I get uh, Smiles, a lot of smiles. <laughs> That's good. So that makes me happy because I feel that I have done my job on my side. And it's very important for me. A chloramine test? Yes. What is that? Chloramine test is once you make that sack, right, there is a stick you have to put in. You have to take that liquid from there to test the water which has been collected. Oh, okay. It should be within the colors which there. So you have to make sure to that and you have to key in all that. We In that iPad, there's a lot of details you have to key in. It's your weight, it's your temperature, your blood pressure, the chloramine test, your uh, blood pressure every half an hour, your readings of how much of liquid have been extracted, 
mm -hmm. you must also understand that with the reading of your blood pressure, uh, if it's low, that means your extraction is too much. You can get cramps. You can even faint. So you must learn those things to uh, learn and become an expert at it. Going back to when your kidneys first failed, you had a catheter yes. inserted in your neck. Yes. How long was it before you could um, get a fistula made and matured so you could remove the catheter? Okay, um, they fixed the catheter as it was an emergency. And um, after a week, they sent me to a vascular surgeon to fix my fistula because it takes two months to mature. So I had the catheter on my neck uh, for two months. You have to be very careful with the neck because it can eject it. But I was very, very careful. I never, when I showered, I make sure I never wet it. I took extra caution of it. My nurses always applauded that. And um, then after my uh, uh, fistula matured, they tried it for six times. It was successful. Then I celebrated the day they removed that because it's like a dangling earring on your neck everywhere. You, everybody's looking at you with a pitiful look and poor thing, this girl. You have to face it. There. <coughs> Right. So when the day they took it out, oh my God, it's out. <laughs> <laughs> the first time you had dialysis was an emergency yes. in the hospital. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit more about that experience? Yeah, it was uh, not pleasant. Uh, because emotionally you're already flat. You are in the ICU. Doctor says your heart is filled with uh, liquid, it's enlarged, and your lungs is filled with liquid. You can't uh, really breathe well, and you feel heavy, and they discharged me. I went back home, I changed my lifestyle completely, and I accepted this is my life now, I'm gonna change today. Limitation of water, I studied on the diets, I became strict, more strict. I cannot eat the salads that I loved it. Even if I want to cook a vegetable, I have to soak it uh, for 20 minutes to let go of the you know, phosphorus in it. And I know the food that I cannot eat tomatoes, to not too much of potatoes because I have to take care of potassium. Too much potassium will harm my heart. Yes. So. You have to go and study everything. Thank you so much for spending the time to share your experience with us. You are truly motivational. <laughs> thank you, Lois, and um, uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to be here.